You know, in one of your interviews, you encourage people to Google the writ of quorum nobis. Yes. So I did. I found that it's a Latin term meaning the error yeah. before us. And that its purpose is to call the court's attention to facts that would have changed the judgment in someone's case. Did you use the writ of quorum nobis yes, to regain your freedom? And uh, if used, so, what, yeah. what was the error in your original judgment? Well, what happened was, if I may. Yes, please. In 1991, I started working in the law library at Soledad State Prison. And I was trying to find a way. It's like, I cannot keep getting denied parole. I mean, I'm being denied parole for no reason. You know, you say, what, what do you mean no reason? They said, get your high school diploma. I did it. Get a trade, welding, got two trades. I go back three years later, no, now, now we want a bachelor's. And I get the bachelor's. I kept jumping through hoops. And I just said, enough is enough. There has to be a way. So I applied myself working in the law library. I went through the writs of habeas. I saw what Clinton did with the Anti-Terrorism Act, that you cannot appeal your case. That, that was one of the worst things Clinton could have done. And I saw a writ of not nobis, a writ of quorum vobis. When you file the writ of quorum nobis, if it's denied, it turns into the writ of quorum vobis, which goes straight to the federal courts. But I didn't want to go to the federal courts. I wanted the state courts to address it. Under the fact that I was a juvenile, I was a teen. The law wasn't applied till 2001, that, or excuse me, till 1982 to try juveniles as adults. Because I was a teen, they sentenced me to a life sentence under the Teen Act, and that was against the law. And I filed it 18 times. It was denied 18 times. I kept filing it every week because there's no limit to how many times you can appeal it or file it. And I just so happened this one time, a Norwalk court, um, a real estate attorney, probate attorney, a probate judge was sitting on the bench. And because it was only six pages and not 160, he said he wanted something to read for lunch. And mm. uh, he read it. He agreed with it. He had me recalled from prison, from Soledad. And uh, he vacated my sentence, said this crime, should you never should have gone to prison. I vacate your sentence, but you're going to go back to prison because you can only have one bite of the apple. Yeah, he. everyone knew that once it went to the appeals court that I was going to be denied. Because I, I had already been denied when you mentioned from the appellate court. Mm -hmm. So he gave me freedom for two years. So for two years, I just enjoyed it traveling the world, knowing okay. I was going um, back to do life again. Oh, so you knew. I knew you I was knew going from back. the onset. That's interesting. But I couldn't fuck That's Paul. That's very interesting. How am I going to fuck Paul Molitor out of $100,000? If I jump bail, right. I was in Costa Rica, and I right. come back for every hearing. And people are like, man, don't come back. I go, man, that man will lose $100,000. What, kind of, what kind of friend would I be to fuck my friend for a hundred k? Right. Yeah. Right. So, um... Submitting arguments as much as you did uh, to have your sentence reexamined requires uh, not only a great deal of time and concentration and preparation, but a lot of money. What were your means to, end up, to, to pay for the process, bro? How were you paying I, for I was it? selling porno pictures. I, had a, I, used to, I was drawing for a magazine called Lowrider and Teen Angel, and mm -hmm. girls would send me bags of mail and naked pictures, and I would make copies of the naked pictures and sell them for books of stamps to pay for my legal fees, my filing fees. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I was doing amongst mm. other things that we don't got to go there. Right. 